Full Metal Alchemist, the 2003 series review, episodes 1 through 10. I've been really looking forward to making this review for a lot of different reasons. First of all, I want to address the, uh, the comments that I see in my first two videos when I was watching episode 1 and when I was watching episodes 2 and 3. While a lot of you actually talked about the contents of those watchings, or would talk about the content of um, the show itself, a lot of people would also talk about the comparisons between the two series. Um, and rather than talking about it in kind of a, a balanced way, you would make the finite claim of which one is better. Um, and a lot of people would also say that it's pointless for me to watch this series because I had already seen Brotherhood, and Brotherhood is a lot closer to the manga. Well, Brotherhood is closer to the manga rather than this series. And I, I want to address both of those claims with kind of the same response, which is it's entertainment, so you can go into it with whatever expectations you want to go into it with, and depending on who you are and what types of shows you enjoy, you're going to get your own entertainment out of it, which is what is so great about TV and books and movies and music and all of that, because depending on what I like and what I enjoy, I I experience the show, the music, the movie, the whatever differently than other people. I started watching anime only a couple of years ago, and one of the first shows I watched was Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, before I even really understood what this channel was about and what I was doing with it, and uh, <laughs> the difference between a review and a watching, and like, I, it was one of my first shows back when it was very experimental. And I look back on the show with a lot of fondness, and I think that this is a fun way for me to re-examine a show I've already watched while also getting to watch a new show. So even though it doesn't follow the manga exactly, and there is a series which follows it exactly, um, I think that there is merit to watching this show, whether I've already seen Brotherhood or not, because watching this show I've already gathered a lot of interesting things and understood some of the stuff that I saw in the first series a lot better because there's more development for characters who in the Brotherhood series um, uh, finished the series <laughs> by episode 10 and <laughs> so there, there's a lot to be gained from watching this series and whether you want to say this one's better, this one's worse, you know, I, I'm not here to make that judgment yet anyway. Maybe by the time I finish with the with the series I will be able to comment on that. I, I will be able to comment on that. But um, so far I'm just enjoying seeing all of these characters again and seeing them kind of just go on a new adventure, like a, a new experience for us all. Now, in addition to being one of the first shows that I ever watched, Full Metal Alchemist was actually one of the first manga that I ever read. Um, and I read it in Japanese while I was in Japan. I bought the first volume, so it's these over here. This is Full Metal Alchemist. Um, I have volumes 1 through 5. Um, I started reading it in order to improve my Japanese, so I do know how the series goes. And I have to um, admit <laughs> that when I was watching these first few episodes, I was a little bit confused with some of the stuff that was happening. There was definitely parts in this series that were not in the other series. But then there were parts in this series that were in the other series, or the manga, but just kind of changed inexplicably. For example, the whole baby being born scene when Ed and Al had to help out and were, were confused and scared and worried and... I definitely remember that happening, and I was watching the, the scene take place, and I was like, I remember this entire scene, but I remember Winry being there, <laughs> and I remember it not being Hughes's family. <laughs> and then, like, after going back and double-checking in the manga, it, it totally, it's like a random family that they visit once, that they, uh, they just didn't put in this series, and instead made it about Hughes's family, which I think is nice. And I think that's a good idea, because then we get more connection to Hughes. <laughs> and, um, you know, we get to have more with him. Um, 
And I, I don't want to spoil Brotherhood for those of you who haven't seen it and you're only watching this series. You're only watching this review because you, you've only seen this series. Um, but I, I did give the disclaimer at the beginning of my review, um, the first video I watched, that I would probably end up spoiling Brotherhood. And I just want to repeat that now. If you haven't seen Brotherhood and you're worried about spoilers, I'm going to spoil things that happen in Brotherhood. And I'm probably going to be spoiling things that happen in this series as well, up until a certain point, um, until it veers off and goes in its own direction. Um, that being said, here I go. Last warning. Hughes died in episode 10 in Brotherhood. And right now, I just watched up to episode 10. And it was an episode completely unrelated to the plot that we were already deep in episode 10. And I think that's really, really interesting. Because the stories that we're getting are little episodic adventures that were not in the Brotherhood series. This whole adventure with Mr. Yoki, who was voiced by Frankie, um, was not in the original, it was not in the Brotherhood series. Um, it happened in a brief 10 second flashback. And I remember watching that series and being like, what? What happened? Why is this guy here? Why does he? I, I was so confused by that. And everyone assured me that it was something that happened, but I, I didn't understand it. And so when I got to read this, and when I got to watch it, I came to understand what had happened, and they just kind of glossed over it um, in the original series. So I've already learned something about Brotherhood that I didn't know about when I watched it. And that to me is, I, I've already gained a lot about a series that I remember and love very much. There's also the Nina incident. Um, Nina was introduced and <sighs> destroyed over the course of one episode in the Brotherhood series. And in the manga, her contribution is only about this much, from her introduction to her death. From her introduction to her turning into a chimera, it's, it's even less time than that. It's only about, I would say, this many pages. Four pages. Um, so the series expanded her role in the, in the show to have you grow more attached to this beautiful young girl who gets sucked up into this tragedy because her father is crazy. Um, and so that I really liked. In, in the series, she was there for three or four episodes in, in this series, the 2003 series. But in Brotherhood, she was only there for a brief amount of time. And that sort of made it hurt a lot more because um, even though I knew what was going to happen to her, seeing her in the series and interacting with the boys a lot more than she did in the um, Brotherhood series helped us get to know her even more, even though I was able, I, I knew what her fate was going to be. and. It, it was a good choice to expand her role in the series and give her that. Um, and even if the, the episodic adventures are made up or if they're um, constructed in a way so that they, they're, they alter it so it, it makes it about certain characters more so than others, um, or about characters that are more central to the plot rather than peripheral characters, then I think that the choices they made were made for a reason. And maybe I'm just crazy, incredibly biased. Because I am. <laughs> Let's just be straight and clear with that. Because I really do like this series, and it's, it's part of my origin story as an anime watcher. So I'm liking it on all different levels. Something that I always found very important about this series was that the two kids Ed and Al had a really good, really positive, endearing relationship. Because if they didn't, then the series would fall absolutely flat. Because the series itself is based on two kids who did something incredibly illegal and stupid. 
and now they're trying to fix it somehow. Um, but because they're portrayed in such a light that they are made sympathetic and made um, endearing to the point where we want them to succeed. And um, if, if they did not work as a charismatic, charismatic and charming pair, then the series wouldn't work. Um, so I think that it's a really good testament to excellent characters created by this author, um, Arakawa Hiro, um, because I've seen shows before where the thing that isn't working about it is the fact that the main characters or the, the main duo or the main whatever just you don't feel enough for them or they're not likable or something. So Ed and Al just across the board, very, very likable duo. And they're they're very lucky in the fact that almost every one of the other characters, all the, uh, all the supporting characters, are very likable as well. Um, and I know we haven't even been introduced to a lot of them yet. Um, and it makes me want, like, I, I'm not exactly sure at what point the series veers off and becomes about something else, so I don't know which characters will be left out. I'm pretty sure they're not going to go up to the mountains in Brotherhood, like they did in Brotherhood. So probably not going to get any Olivier Armstrong and, uh, not Scar, what's his name? Miles. All those people. I'm pretty sure we're not going to get any of those people. So. I, I'm just kind of sitting here waiting for us to go off because that's when I think is going to be the most interesting whereas um, it, it's also interesting because of the, the expanded adventures that we didn't get in Brotherhood. I also really like that there is expand, an, an expansion of Ed becoming an alchemist, a, a, um, a military alchemist because it shows step by step the process that he and Al went through in order to get to the point that he's at now and um, how much Roy held his hand throughout the entire process to get him that job because I, I didn't find that was expressed very clearly in Brotherhood and I didn't realize just uh, how much Roy ended up helping him or even manipulating the situation so that it would happen the way he wanted it to happen. And I enjoy that new dimension to Roy because when Roy was introduced to us in Brotherhood, he was came off as kind of a goofball who eventually evolved into someone who was serious. Um, and so in this series, I kind of see him immediately presented as someone who is serious. And I'm not sure if he can become goofy or if he will become goofy. I remember him going off on a rant about miniskirts, but maybe that was the original series, the uh, Brotherhood series. So I'm not sure, but I do think I do think that overall there is a different presentation of the characters. It does feel a little bit more serious. The characters all seem a lot younger to me, and again, it's just a great new way to look at a series that I treasure very much. Now you guys gave me a great new schedule, which is in the description. The reason why I stopped it here at episode 10 is because, um, well, for one, episode 10 was a, a kind of a landmark episode for me. I remember exactly what happened in episode 10 and how devastated I was. I, I remember what I was wearing that day and I remember what I did that day too. Um, and I, I kind of wanted to bring it to episode 10 to just kind of compare where the two were at that time. But also because um, the suggestion was that I just watch all the way through to like episode 20 or something like that. And I wanted to break it up a little bit so that I could kind of start off these reviews talking about the, the, the comments that I'm getting about comparing the two. And to, to actually just simply compare the two, which is what most of this review was about, just comparing the two series to get it off the ground. And, um, you know, in the next reviews, I do plan on talking more freely about just this series as it is. Um, so I wanted to stop it here, and um, I know that I, I've been informed that episode 11 and 12 are a two-parter, so I figured I'd just do a watching for that.
So I'll see you guys for episodes 11 and 12, and then from there I'll be doing another review. Bye!